Episode 8 was an incredible, unbelievable event. Pure genius that blew my mind. Hey, I'm G, and this is the G-Spot. The first story was with Doppelganger Cooper and Ray. So we see both death and birth in the first story with Doppelganger. He experiences death, and then I guess for him, technically, it would be rebirth, because he's reborn again. Can't get too hung up on those words. We're just looking for relating themes in all three of these stories. And Doppelganger did die, and then he came back to life. So we did cut to the Bang Bang very early in the episode for a performance. And we're used to these performances being at the end of the episode. The reason why we saw it so early in this episode is because it was the end of the storyline in the current timeline that, we're, that we've seen in this story. That was the only bit we got from the characters from Twin Peaks Buckhorn in Las Vegas in episode 8. So in a way, it was like okay this is the end of episode eight and now here's some additional information for you the second story we get starts with man's uh, very first nuclear explosion on July 16th in 1945, the Manhattan Project tested its first atomic bomb. The fact that we use nuclear power as a weapon is a pretty big deal for our species. A nuclear explosion is death, destruction. We see the birth of evil within this explosion. The camera zooms right in on the mushroom cloud and then we are lost in the mushroom cloud. We go through several minutes of music and lots of different flashes on the screen. Now part of what we're seeing and hearing is Lynch putting us in a certain emotional state so that emotionally we go through this ride of death and birth. He wants us to experience this on a subconscious level. A lot of these images that we see are very reminiscent of what the Big Bang would have looked like, what the beginnings of our universe looked like before planets and solar systems were fully formed. So there is a lot of references to beginnings and birth in this scene. After a lot of these type clips, we get some hints as to what's been going on with the Black Lodge. One of the big pieces of information we get in this nuclear explosion story is we see the space that Cooper's falling through in earlier episodes created. This nuclear explosion created the space that allows the figures and people from the Black Lodge to travel into our world. We cut to the convenience store and there's something going on at the convenience store we can't exactly see what it is at first. Eventually, we see that there are woodsmen moving at speeds that are beyond our sight. And the best way to describe what we saw is they were preparing something. They seemed very busy at work, but we could not see what they were doing. They always walked with their hands like this. They moved with what seemed like purpose, but the purpose cannot be identified. There were several different woodsmen in this scene. They do not all look alike, but they do all act alike. So I'm getting this idea that these woodsmen are like minions or worker bees for the Black Lodge. But they don't seem to be mindless worker bees or minions. They seem to be driven with a great purpose and capable of doing whatever they need to do. So we, we stay at this convenience store for quite a few minutes on them, with them bustling around and getting to work. This convenience store is really, really significant. It looks like that at the beginning of the birthing of the evil that Bob represents and the whole Black, Black Lodge represents, while this was being birthed into our world, that the woodsmen came ahead of time to prepare where they were going to live. They were preparing the convenience store for Bob, and the other members of the Black Lodge to live. Now, one of the, the more interesting things about the convenience store that we saw in episode eight was it really didn't look like there was a place above it to live. However, on the side, we do see a staircase that leads up to the top. Once we get this really cool scene at the convenience store, we zoom in and we find ourselves looking at kind of an unidentifiable object but what it did remind me of was this entrance into the glass box interestingly enough when we go through this cone-like thing what we are presented with is the experiment and the experiment kind of throws something up uh it's all very white and almost pretty looking except then we zoom in and we see a black bubble with bob's Face. The other thing that we see come out of this puke is this egg, and this egg later on becomes very significant. We get one last thing in this scene before we cut to somewhere else, fiery explosions 
first. So it seems like this next thing that we get, which is this gold blob, seems to come from the nuclear explosion itself rather than from the experiment. After that, we cut, we see these red balls falling through space, and then we are brought to this vast ocean. This vast ocean is something we've seen before. We saw it in episode three when Cooper visits the very strange place. We follow the ocean to a mountain, go up the mountain. There's a what looks like a huge observatory on top of this mountain, which is where Cooper was. Inside this observatory, we see Senorita Dido. We see the recorder, which we've seen before. We've seen this in episode one. We also see a bell-like structure in this room. It starts making a constant sound, which at first I did relate to the banging on the door from episode three. This man, this unknown man uh, walks in. It looks like he's staring off and watching something while the noise is going on. He looks at Senorita Dido, but there's no talking. Maybe they're communicating without talking, uh, but there's no talking. He stares off into the distance. It does look like he's watching something. And then after a little bit, he turns the bell off and he walks out of the room. He then walks into another room. It has a, a movie screen projector and we see him start to witness what we've just saw with the nuclear explosion, with the experiment throwing things up. And we realize that this place is beyond anything we've seen before in the sense that this place has an omnipotent type ability that it's able to look down upon us and watch us. He's watching things that already occurred. It is a godlike presence that this place seems to have. As soon as he sees Bob's face in a bubble, he walks to the corner of the room, he floats up, he goes through this whole thing with his head, and Senorita Dido also walks into the room. When we look at Senorita Dido, it seems that she's happy that this man is doing whatever he's doing. Now, what we're seeing here with this man it could be thought of as energy flow. Energy flow, according to Eastern type meditation beliefs flows from our head, it flows into, into our body from the top of our head and out of our body from the top of our head. This energy comes out, it forms a weird pattern and we eventually get this golden orb that floats down to Senorita Dido. She holds it in her hand and we see the face of Laura Palmer. This is really significant. We've seen the birth of Bob. We've seen the birth of this evil brought into our world. And now we are seeing its opposing force, which is represented by Laura Palmer's face. This brings up a huge question. What is Laura Palmer and what was she meant for? From this episode, it leaves open the possibility that Laura Palmer is the world savior, that she is meant to destroy Bob. The woman takes the golden globe, she inserts it into another cone type like entrance and it, it floats in front of the screen and then actually enters the screen which now has the earth on it and we see the golden orb start to orbit earth as if she sent Laura Palmer to earth. So in a nuclear explosion, we get the birth of Bob in the Black Lodge. Bob enters our world, we see him in the bubble and then we see Senorita Dido and this man react to Bob's entrance by creating this golden orb with Laura's face and they send the golden orb to Earth. So through the death and destruction that man made with the atomic bomb, we witnessed the birth of both evil Bob and good Laura in our world. The third story brings us to 1956. It opens up with the egg that we saw come out of what the experiment threw up. A lot of civilizations believe that the universe was born from an egg. It's not that crazy of an idea. It's kind of a simplified way of explaining the Big Bang. The egg cracks open, some type of thing comes out. It's not from Earth. When we see this creature, bug, whatever it is, come out of the egg, if we look at the egg, there's still stuff swirling around in it, almost like there is a whole universe inside this egg. So it is obviously a, a very powerful egg. This isn't just some crazy beetle that we just saw come out of the egg. It's something extremely powerful. Interestingly enough, it doesn't have a lot of power at all when it comes out of the egg. It drags its body through the sand, almost like it's dying. We then cut to the teenage couple, the girl is talking very choppy at first. Not sure if this is caused by what's going on with the woodsmen all around this area at this time because there are multiple woodsmen in the area. We also see that people are directly affected by these woodsmen when they are approached by them. 
When we see the couple in the car, the main woodsman here, and he's asking them for a light, the couple goes into some kind of slow motion type thing. It's most evident through the wife's voice. At first, I thought her voice was another woodsman who's standing like in front of the car because it's so odd. But if, if you watch, it's her voice and she's like basically speaking. And when you look, it, it does look like she's moving in slow motion. So they were affected just by the woodsman's presence. We then follow the wood, woodsman into the radio station. The receptionist seems to literally be captivated by him. As soon as she turns around, she starts walking towards him. And there, there seems to be surprise in her face that should be normal in a situation like, what or who the hell are you and why do you look like that and why are you talking like that? But even though she has this look of surprise on her face, she can't stop herself from going right to him. We see him put her his hand on her head and he kills her in this fashion. It doesn't seem like he crushes her head. It almost seems like he lets energy flow into her, heats up her insides, or vibrates them quick enough to where she explodes from the inside out and we see the blood come out all over the place. He then walks into uh, the DJ's room and takes over the microphone. The DJ does not seem attracted to him, does not seem to want to walk towards him, seems very fearful of him. The woodsman then picks up the microphone and he starts with... As this man continually says this on the radio, we see that it has a huge effect on the people listening. They seem to die. It's hard to say whether they die or pass out, but outside the girl's house, we see the thing that was that came out of the egg. Now this thing is still struggling to move until it can hear the message coming from the woodsman over the radio. As soon as it hears the message, unlike the three people who heard the message and were definitely weakened by it, possibly killed, this thing gains strength from the message. It's obviously a force of evil. It flies to where the sound is coming from, into the room, and right to the girl. It lands next to the girl. This next part was so disgusting. The bug or thing literally picks its head up and makes a sound to the girl's mouth before she opens her mouth. So the bug commanded the girl to open her mouth. The bug crawls in and here is the birth in this part of our story of with a birth of this parasite in this young girl's stomach. The big question is, is, is something going to grow and come out of this young girl? Or has this girl's body been possessed and taken over by something? If it is that her body has been possessed and taken over by something, who is she going to grow up to be? That's essentially what episode eight was. Three separate stories all about death and birth. We learned that the evilness that Bob and the Black Lodge are came into our world through our own actions, we saw the beginning of the convenience store where the people from the Black Lodge live. And we also saw another beginning, another birth with this girl and the parasite that crawled inside her. If you liked the video, don't be afraid to go ahead and give it a like. If you want to be sure to be aware of all the Twin Peaks episode, all the Twin Peak videos I upload, including my next two videos, which are going to deal on a lot of possible theories for season three. Go ahead, subscribe, click the bell, and you will be alerted every time I upload a video. If you know anybody else who watches Twin Peaks and was absolutely fascinated by episode eight, go ahead and share the video with them. It will give you something to talk about. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.